You're listening to the Inquisitive Wren Podcast, the show that brings you philosophical ponderings of your life from a bird's eye view. Now, here's your host, Shah. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. Thanks so much for joining me today. And we are in season two. This is episode three. And I have the pleasure of welcoming to the podcast Dominique Brighton. Dom is a certified trainer with the Maxwell Leadership Team. He's a best-selling author. He's published two books. And he's the host of the Going North podcast, which is very interesting because he features authors from around the world to promote the power of the written word. He also inspires other listeners to publish books of their own. His mantra is advance others to advance yourself. And I love that. I think we can all resonate with that. Sometimes it's difficult to think about helping others when you're in a difficult position yourself. So I do, uh, I'm quite confident that this will help you today. Any of you who are in that position, I think that this interview can help. I'm so pleased to have him on the show today. So welcome, Dom. Tom, it's so lovely to see you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, thanks a bunch, Shaw, for having me. That's right, indeed. <laughs> Inquisitiveness, you love it. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes, I know. I'm so inquisitive. Always have been since a child. I was always saying, what's that? Why? How come? <laughs> Those are my questions every day. So um, now, you know what? I would like to start out by asking you, because you're an author, uh, you publish two books, but you also interview authors. And we're going to talk about your podcast in a minute. But what drew you to wanting to put your words in book form? Ah, great question. Great question, indeed. Funny enough, it actually started off as a dare. That's actually how it all started off. It really wow. started off and actually ignited a flame within me because back in 2012 i had a nice little setback sandwich as i call it where it was towards the end of summer my father went out for a drive and he got lost in the city 40 miles outside of baltimore and we discovered that he had alzheimer's so we basically had to take away his license and i basically had to become part-time caregiver for him month later 21st birthday i'm away to it security class my car gets I just crashed my car and I'm stuck not being able to drive for a month. I came out unscathed, thank God, but internally I was still going through some stuff. And when it comes to our lives, we try to separate the personal and the professional. Some people don't. And the truth is we really can't completely do it because I got called in to the office for my day job at the time at a local public library where my boss called me in and mentioned that I was screwing up in all these different areas back to back. And she mentioned that she's got some new staff members coming in and that folks are going to be seeing, looking up to me as a leader because I was there for five years at the time. And if someone's been in the company for five years, they can't be all bad. They, they can't really duck and dodge everybody. They have to know something. And where I was at that state, it wasn't really looking good. And I wasn't performing at my usual self. And Funny enough, like I hated the meeting at the time because I was like, darn, I thought I was doing all right, but I wasn't. But funny enough, the word leader stuck in my subconscious mind. So ended up shelving books one day, found John Maxwell's Five Levels of Leadership, changed my life forever. Then joined Toastmasters, heard a millennial author speak. It was like 23 hours, 21 at the time, and he had a book. And then when it came down to that dare, a couple years later, where I was handing out reading lists to people, where I would put my contact information at the bottom as my form of business card to stay relevant and interesting to people, the lady who got the list asked me where my name was on this list as an author. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm on there. I'm on there right there at the bottom. There's my phone number, email. She's like, oh, I'm talking about you as an author. You as a writer. And I'm like, eh, now I'm 23. What the heck I got to write about? And she's like, hey, how about a year from today you write a book of your own? And I'm like, eh, that sounds good and all, but nah, I think I'm good. Okay, how about we both write a book a year from today? And I'm like, man, that's freaking cool. No, I'm not doing it. And we, I walked off and 
told a buddy of mine about it and funny enough it was actually in november that was november 2015 and it's nana rhyme month for those who may not know what that is it's where you basically for the whole month of november you focus on writing a book especially a novel you don't have to publish it but just write it get it done and even though i didn't completely do it that month I was that dare actually ignited a fire within myself because a couple days later, <laughs> which was kind of a trap I set for myself when I told my friend about it, I was giving a presentation in a meeting and the requirement was to give a Q&A session after the speech. And the speech had nothing to do with the book writing, nothing at all. And my buddy in the back was like, hey, Dom, so when are you going to write your book? And I'm like, and there's just this long, awkward silence for about a good three seconds. It felt like 10 in my head. And I'm like, man, I do not want to look like a punk on stage. So I said, a year from today, I'm going to write my book. So I ran home after the meeting was over. Pen was on fire. 14 pages of raw content that became the last chapter of my first ever book, Going North, Tips and Techniques to Advance Yourself. And the rest is basically history for that because... <laughs> the year i actually ended up completing the dare even though i never really shook on it and she never <laughs> thought that i actually would follow through with it because i never said yes i would do it but i ended up doing it anyway <laughs> incredible though now i'm sure you've thought a lot about that story and the <laughs> and the synchronicities in there and how people help to propel you uh, without perhaps them knowing it, perhaps without you knowing it, but they kept calling you to task. Every single person eventually, when are you going to write it? When you Eventually your friend said in front of loads of people, when are you going? <laughs> so you were called to task. Wow. That is, I love that story. That's incredible. So yes, yeah, so that was your first book, actually, Going North, tips and techniques to advance yourself. Um, and so, you know, when I looked at that book, uh, you talk a lot about becoming a better thinker, which I really like, because we do need to shift our thinking. A lot of my work is about that, shifting your, these old beliefs, the, the way you think presently in the present day. How can people become better thinkers? Uh, sure thing. And funny enough, folks don't even ask me that question a lot on these podcasts, surprisingly. So you're a rare breed indeed. So that's what I'm talking about. And how to become a better thinker. I actually put it in the book as the PAR method, P-A-R, preparation, action, reflection. And there are five separate questions because questions require a thought and a response. And if you can write your answers down, it'll make you even better, and it'll stick out a lot longer for you. So the preparation questions, the first two, it's always best to ask these the night before so your brain can get cooking. One is, what good will I do today? What good will I do today? That way you can focus your mind on the things that are good, focusing on the positives, thinking on a positive note, because there's still a lot of folks out there who will watch the news before going to bed, I'm definitely not one of them because I don't need that in my life before going to bed. And then some starting off their day with the news. I get it. You want to be informed, but like having it on your television in the background, like, no, nah, I'm not that. I'll, I'll rather just go through a few notifications on my phone that'll give me some recommendations. And if that, just checking the weather, to be honest, the weather's really the only news I feel like I need to pay attention to. If the world's ending, I'm sure I'll see it outside anyway. <laughs> Question number two. <laughs> Question number two is what can I share? This could be a kind word with somebody. This can be a smile pre-pandemic. It could be a hug with a friend. It could be calling a friend you haven't talked to in a while, seeing how they're doing, not selling something, not trying to get them into your pyramid, because that's one of the most telltale signs ever. You meet, you get a random message from a high school classmate you haven't talked to in like seven, 10 years, and they're like, hey, how you doing, buddy? And it's like, how you doing? Hey, how you want to come to this virtual meeting? And it's like, oh, God, no. I don't need to be recruited for this. <laughs> like, not that. Just checking up in, checking up on people, 
sharing a kind word with somebody, making somebody feel good, even time. Heck, even if someone's being a caregiver, like coming in and helping to fix things around the home, if that's one of their thing problems that's going on. So focusing on what good you can do, focusing on what you can share. Then the action is, what must I do? We all have long to-do lists. Some of them may be longer than a scroll. Some of them may be longer than <laughs> the Great Wall of China. But at least going through and seeing which tasks that you have to take care of the day, focusing on no more than six. Because I've tried 10 one day. I was lucky to get seven. But six seems to be a good number. Focusing on six tasks a day and heck, even focusing on three that you can make sure you get done for the day and knocking those out. And now we get into the reflection piece. The fourth one is, what good did I do today? If you wrote down an answer for the first one, follow through with it. You already got your answer for the fourth one. And then the fifth one is, what did I learn today? Focusing on always learning, like this podcast itself. It's really all about learning, having the curiosity for People around the world have interesting stories to share that folks may get inspired by, educated by, and inspired by. And just listening to this show today, folks may go back to past episodes. They may listen to Shah's one-year anniversary episode and realize, hey, she had a bunch of bloopers and realize, oh, crap, podcasting is actually a lot of work. You don't just turn a mic on and you start talking. It's like, oh, you got to edit episodes. You got to market your show after it's done. You got to recruit guests and you got to hope they show up and they'll ghost on you on the day of or the day before and then if they show up the tech is it going to work right and if it works right are they going to share their episode after they're done and it's like it, it's just all these different things you have to really learn so that's really the par method preparation action and reflection those five questions especially in the beginning of my personal development journey have helped me to become a better thinker especially uh optimistic positive think you're focusing on looking for the good as opposed to always looking for red flags everywhere mm. oh that is so good that is manna for the soul because it really does all those five steps it keeps your brain engaged and not only does it keep your brain engaged all of those steps but it helps with dopamine, which is the feel good drug, it was our natural feel good drug. So you're not, as you said, you're not looking at the, you know, the negative. You're reflecting, you're looking at the positive. What can I do? Well, how's it going to help? Who am I gonna help? How did I do today? So this is all positive stuff. This is really positive psychology, really. So psychologists would love this. <laughs> They've been trying to use these techniques for years. They put it in different, you know, categories, mindfulness and all sorts of things. Cognitive behavioral therapy, it's all that. But that's great, Dom. So those five steps. So guys, Dom's books are all on Amazon. Very easy to find, but the links will be in the show notes. But let's talk about your second book which is actually dear to my heart because you go into concepts that I love. You know, I'm, I'm all into Tao and, you know, the ancients and, you know, I started yoga years ago when nobody was doing yoga except in India. We used to go to India a lot. And, it, you know, so yoga for me has been, the, so separate from that, you seem to be drawn to the Japanese the, perhaps even the language, but you reference two methods in your book, Stay the Course, The Elite Performer's Seven Secrets, Keys to Sustainable Success. And that is Shoshin, which is the beginner's mind, which I love, sort of emptying the mind before you can allow anything new in. And then Kazin, which is all about continuous improvement, you know, personal development for, for everybody out there, spiritual development, all of that. Tell us a bit about this book because you draw towards that and these methods, what drew you towards them? Ah, uh, yes, yeah, right indeed. For those listening, looking to start a podcast of their own, you got to pay attention to shop because she did her homework, y'all. That's right indeed. She did her homework and because she brought out two wonderful concepts she so she actually paid attention to 
for chapter one of the book. So A1 right there, A1 right there. But yeah, this book actually came from a place of realizing that there's still some growing that needed to be done because my first ever book, Going North, it was published October 2016. Getting TV, podcasts, radio interviews, and going a bit of a local tour and heck, even actually a DMV tour, if anything, a Delaware, Maryland, Virginia tour with the book. And sadly, my father passed about a good five months after the book was published. So he died in March 2017. After that long battle with it, it was about a good six years. And there's a lot of anticipatory grief with me and the family. We were anticipating this moment it was going to happen. We were all sad that he was gone, and when it happened, it probably was good for all the parties involved because he passed away. It was on a Monday night, and we had a big snowstorm that Monday night, and we were basically, the town was basically shut down for the most part the following day, so we got to be with ourselves. And making a long story (laughs) shorter... Bringing up a couple weeks after the funeral, everything everything went off without a hitch. Things were better than expected. Went back to work day after. Thought I was doing good. <laughs> Seems to be a trend. It's like, hey, we we think we sometimes it can get so cocky when we get to a certain place that if we stop growing and stop paying attention to what's going around us, not having that sense of awareness, then we can slip up. And this is the importance of having folks who know how we tick, what makes us click, what makes us think, and how we perform. Because, sadly enough, about a good three months later, boss called me and was like, hey, Dom, you sure you're okay? Like, you've been not yourself recently. It's like been flashes of, like, the ultra-positive you, and you, you're still giving great customer service, internal and external, but something seems off. You're still sure you're okay because there's you've been screwed up in these areas that are different from the one for five years ago more responsibility now and after that meeting i realized wow i think i need some self-awareness some more self-awareness here and that's really the major thesis of the book is that awareness especially self-awareness is the major key of elite performance because i was lacking that self-awareness so in that time i studied more about emotional intelligence and things like that and realize, wait, so emotional intelligence is self-awareness, especially awareness of those around you. And awareness goes even deeper than just being aware of yourself. It goes into multiple areas, but I like to put it in an acrostic called Mitch in these five areas of awareness. So the first one is, and you'll love this one, mental awareness. That's where the two Japanese thoughts came in for the Shoshin and the Kaizen, the in-in method. Basically focusing on having a beginner's mind, always learning something new, growing and getting better. Then there is the influence awareness, being aware of what's influencing you today, like what you watch, what you listen to, your environment. Everything around you is going to influence you in one way or another, and your energy is going to show depending on where you are in terms of what is influencing you. Then there's the T, which is time awareness. And the reason why I call it time awareness is one, to keep up with the theme of awareness. And two, time management is a fallacy because we're just managing our attention and our energy. Because the thing is, time moves fast. I jokingly say now, (laughs) days like this, I wish time would metaphorically take a smoke break, a long one, because it seems to be going so fast and everybody has that same amount of time but the thing is what we do with our time separates our versions of success so that's why it's really attention management managing where your attention goes in this distraction age and energy management because we only have a set amount of energy depending on where you are at your stage of life because somebody who is 70 years old may not be as mobile as a 15 year old So being able to manage your energy for what things matter the most. Then there's the C, connection awareness, networking, connecting with other people, making sure the connections that you have already are nurturing them and growing them like your own people garden. Do you have weeds in your metaphorical people garden? Making sure that you're connected with people that really share your values and that are in places where you want to go that help you to be your best you. 
and the thumb to put it all together, the H, which is habit awareness, being aware of your habits. Because one of the things with after losing my dad and during that time, I was also in leadership position where I was overseeing 17 clubs. It was basically another 40 hours a week where I basically got zero to three hours of sleep almost every night because I had a full time job, part time caregiver for my dad and a full time job. And I was starting with my book business. So all of that culminating together, leading to a lack of sleep, led me to slacking off with my CrossFit and cock, um, kickboxing classes. Also dedicating more time to Toast Masters, where the whole district leadership position, where I was basically scattering myself, my energy in so many different directions, something had to really give. And I gained a bunch of weight. So I basically had to dial it back a bit with the Toastmasters to get back to where I really wanted to be and lose some of that weight. So habits really determine your wealth. So that's really where the book came from and what really (laughs) to expect from the book. What you talk about, though, is amazing. I do want to say something quickly. I'm really sorry to hear about your father and Alzheimer's dementia. uh, There are several types of dementia, but Alzheimer's is one. And it is a progressive illness. And a lot of people don't understand dementia. And it would help if people read a bit about it. But there is nothing like personal experience with dementia. And that must have been very tough for you and your family. Um, So I'm sorry to hear about that. And you do watch people decline, literally in front of your very, very eyes. Um, And probably the best description I could find for dementia, particularly Alzheimer's, uh, is once a man, twice a child. And um, that, uh, you know, that that is a very difficult thing to watch. So, you know, it's not they're not doing anything on purpose. They're not you know, it's not their fault. They can't remember you or it's not their fault. They can't. You know, that that for families is very difficult to deal with. So, yeah, that must have been tough. So it's no wonder going through a lot of that, your mind had was taken up with other things and it must have been difficult, you know, to adjust. So, yeah, that was tough. Um, But, you know, what you talk about in your book Um, and stay the course about I like it because it does remind me of that quote from Mark Twain something about I I wrote it down here all you need in this life is ignorance and confidence and then (laughs) and then success is sure he said so I think that's true you know one of my favorite saying things is I don't know I I don't know tell me show me show me I don't know you know, why are you asking me? I don't know. Um, and sometimes I may think I know, but I will say I don't know because I want to see just because I know something doesn't mean somebody else doesn't know something differently or in a different way. I want to hear what you know. What do you know? <laughs> so I like that quote from Mark Twain. I can never remember all the words, but I found it today. I remember it from ages ago. But yes. So all your books are there, but I love the Japanese um, sort of reference there. And uh, so you you have you ever thought about that? Are you drawn to different cultures? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Japanese culture, of course, growing up like the whole anime manga scene and then just going deeper into the way the Japanese believe and do things like respect for their elders, cleanliness, and just that, just that influence. And of course, even with reading some of Bruce Lee's books and being interested in Eastern religions, it's really a great thing. And heck, even the thing is like, I'm a Christian by choice with my faith, but the Bible itself, it's actually an Eastern thought book that's been translated. So it's just really realizing that hey the sources of these materials where these truths and lessons and stories come from right. it's a really powerful thing so yeah I'm, a, I'm interested in all the cultures and learning from them and even admiring 
some of them too for what they do because really like ace especially <laughs> eastern cultures because they've been around longer than the folks on the west side <laughs> <Have indeed. Wasoid. laughs> yeah they have indeed and their pra- and their practices are ancient and they have proven may i mean there's a reason why the japanese has the longest living rate in the world there's a reason why people live longer in japan it's not just about eating rice it's about <laughs> you know, well you know i'm saying that because people think diet is everything it, it, it isn't just about diet it's about mindset as well so speaking of which my favorite interview and i must admit you've got so many on your podcast but i loved your interview with ken honda that was Ooh. definitely <laughs> my favorite um, so far, I've only listened to a few, I've been able to listen to a few, but, um, and I like the, you know, the talking about success, the money mindset, yet, yeah, but yes, but it was all about success. And sometimes I think we can push things away. We can push people away. We push success away. We can push money away without wanting to, we can push it all away. So I love that interview about Ken, Ken talking about bringing things in literally rather than pushing them away so what is your uh philosophy around success because in my work i have heard from different people of all walks you know some very very high elite some really really um how do i say um privileged that's what i'll say and you know people have never had to work and you know silver spoons and Two, people who work two jobs, to you know, who are out of work as well, who may be getting help funding to have their therapy because people do. Um, and some people see success differently. So for some people, success is that they had loads of failures. They find that that's success because they keep trying. So if you come from that mindset, rather than I'm a failure, I've had loads of failures, you know, Different mindset. What's your, what's your idea of success? Ah, uh, fun question. My idea of success and what I believe success is is self mastery. Mm-hmm. Self mastery, because the thing is, the success today isn't going to be the same success tomorrow. Self mastery, absolutely. Now, so let's talk about performance for a second. Um, but you know, I wrote an article a few years ago about. Um, athletic performance because I was getting a lot of athletes for mindset and changing beliefs and stuff. We t- I was just talking to Professor Ursula James, my last podcast, and we were talking about sometimes we get clusters of people, like I'll get loads of people for phobias or loads of people stuff looking. But at one point I got lots of athletes. So, and I do get other big clusters, but um I talked a little bit, and guys, the link to that article is on my Facebook page and other social media. I want to ask you about performance and how people can be at their peak. How can people develop good habits, things that they can practice daily to help them with their performance? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about indeed. Sweet. Well, when it comes to performance, it's all about delivery. You, in my case, usually define elite performance as always delivering great service to whatever business you're a part of, whether it's your own as an entrepreneur or if you're a part of a company. Because at the end of the day, when we go to work, we have to basically be on. We have to be on stage. The classic Shakespeare quote: "Everybody's a stage, and everybody's on a stage, and everyone must have to play their parts. And if we play our parts well." to a high enough high enough caliber we get to the higher echelon of success of self-mastery it's like oh wow feels freaking great and that usually happens when you focus on starting by having a good day the night before kind of like earlier in the conversation i mentioned the preparation action and reflection of the two questions like hey getting your brain to go to sleep and focusing on what good you're going to create the following day when you wake up in a few hours focusing on what you can share with others because sharing is caring and a cheerful giver invites more cheer to come into their life and just really focusing on setting the tone for your day the night before having 
whatever you planned out for the night before. There's even been an article out a couple, there was a few years ago where it talked about U.S. presidents, how they would have their outfits basically set aside for the whole week. He, heck, even Steve Jobs, he basically had the sweater and jeans and a pair of New Balances. Because the thing is, decision fatigue is a real thing. If you wake up in the morning, they could, oh, what the heck am I going to wear? Today has got to be clean. That's the minimum. And does this match or for those who actually like to try to match the clothes together and have some sets of style. It's like, oh, do these match? Do these? Wait, do I, I have mixed match socks. Is that going to be cool? Oh, wait, I'm quirky. They're, they're going to work. Now, I don't know where you're wasting a few minutes deciding on what you're going to wear for the day. And then you get out the home. And then it's like, oh, man, I got to get going. Got my coffee going. Let me answer all these emails. But wait, let me connect with my colleagues if you're not ro working remotely. And then it's like, okay, now I finally get to these emails like, oh, I still got those projects I need to take care of and get some progress in from the day before. So really focusing on creating a good day the night before, having your stuff ready the day of, and then once the day really begins, focusing on knocking out a few tasks, getting a couple small wins, if not getting a big win, because there's even days where I've I'm actually scheduled to give a presentation and that's my major thing. And focusing on that keeps me excited all day long. And it shows in the other work as well. And heck, even my days of customer service, where I would even sometimes practice parts of my presentations on the customers with silly jokes, <laughs> and no matter how corny they are, or even asking them random questions that they're in the mood. And if there's time, available so it really pours out to different areas so not only that but also making sure other habits like basically making because there's one thing that i've noticed too and i actually picked this up after pub publishing book number two is using your alarms to actually set aside and schedule time for yourself like a blitzkrieg of 30 minutes i think it's even called the pomodoro technique i believe where you actually set an alarm and go as fast as you can for 30 minutes with writing or doing a certain task and get as much as you can done. And then you can schedule another set amount of time. So those are just a few of the habits that elite performers do is really having a good day by preparing the night before and making sure you actually get a good amount of sleep too, making sure you have those good eight hours of sleep because they're it, it, no matter how good you are, no matter how different your body may be, we're all going to need sleep. <laughs> some can folk, some can go with four hours of sleep. That's cool. Some folks jokingly say hundreds of millions of years ago, we didn't have ADT. We had, we had to sleep for four hours and get out and hunt. It's like, okay, I, I get it. But as long as you get some sleep. <laughs> exactly. The body has to rest. Um, yeah, very good points. That's helpful to know, uh, because I guess you can't really perform at your peak, can you? I mean, as you say, some people will argue with that, won't they? They'll say, well, I'm at my best when I'm stressed or I'm at my best when I haven't slept. I've had musicians say that to me that, you know, they, they play best when they haven't slept. Um, and I guess everybody's <laughs> body clock is different and everybody is different. But you're right. Sleep, unless the body gets it, it will suffer in some way. Now, you host your own podcast. It's the Going North podcast. For people in the back or in the in the high seats, in the nosebleed seats, why Going North? <laughs> why did you Going North? People way up there in the back. <laughs> i guess it's kind of a pun intended way up there in the back way up north <laughs> but yeah it actually started off as a joke because one day i was coming into work and one of my colleagues was like hey dom how's it going and for some reason i decided to be literal say hey i'm going north <laughs> and another colleague just busted out laughing because it's like hey sometimes we say things that we've gained from talking to other people and pick up slang and never really think about it and i like to be literal and corny for every now and then well i mean every now and then every day just for laughs and giggles and that's just the way i think and that joke actually became a brand because like that used to be my go-to 
saying whenever someone would ask me, hey, how's it going? Because like, oh, yeah, I'm doing fine or doing well. It's like fine is not a direction. Good is not a direction. But north is a direction. And north is good. North is moving forward, moving upward, advancing, advancing others to advance yourself. And it's all about going in the right direction in life. And that direction led to a book that eventually became a podcast where I get to interview fellow authors and give them a platform to get their stories out there, even getting their feet up with interviewing, because one of my favorite things in, in the world is to be able to connect with fellow authors, especially first time authors, give them a platform to be speak. I'll even shout out one past guest I had on my show, Lori Walker. She's the sweet lady out in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. And even though she's a Pittsburgh Steelers fan and, that's a rival team in my home team of Baltimore Ravens, even though she's a Steelers fan. We had a fun interview, and she was so nervous, but she got calm, and she was able to have fun because I'm all about having fun. And to this day, she's eternally grateful because she's like, you chose me to be on your show with all these other people. And it's like, yeah, because at the end of the day, we all are human, no matter how much success you have, no, no matter what your riches, your wealth, no matter your connections, we're all human we all have a start date and an end date we all have to take bio breaks so at the end of the day folks have great stories to share and it's all about encouraging those with stories to share that can help other people overcome because her story was in a book called mayhem to miracles where a lady had to mary queen had to slap her into reality and be like hey she went through because Lori went through a divorce and she was working at a job and then this lady, Mary Queen, was her mentor and helped her to get over her suicidal thoughts because she was feeling suicidal after going through a painful, tragic divorce because Mary herself went through a divorce as well. And they were eternal friends after that. And she dedicated her chapter to Mary Queen because, to be honest, if Mary Queen didn't show up to basically get her back and rally, encourage her and focus on living as opposed to giving up, then she would have never been able to write that story. And that's even the word of encouragement for those listening, like those who've encouraged you in the past, like those people who are responsible for your success today. If they're alive today, find them, thank them, and show them appreciation because time is finite. Time is short and long. It's short because we never know when we're going to leave. And it's long because we could have a whole list of regrets when we get to the end of our life if we don't take that action today. So encouraging others is the powerful thing and that's really where going north came from focusing on going up mm. oh i love that i love what you said about mentoring or if somebody has helped you whether they meant to or not because sometimes people can help us without meaning to lessons have come from me going oh how did what do you mean by that and then i realized well whoa, whoa light bulb that's amazing yes um years and years ago um but what are some of your favorites you you mentioned that you you've talked to a lot of people on your podcast you you've done so well i mean you put out a podcast almost every day it's like <laughs> you you put out lo you you get these interviews and it's fantastic you get lots and lots of views you've had excellent feedback as well so guys you've got to go follow dom's podcast going north uh the link will be in the description in the show notes but you know you've had a really good feedback so you know what's some of the life lessons you've had from people ah there's so many and funny enough sam Leibowitz he wrote this book called everyday awakening and on going north he actually dropped a tip of writing a victory log because those who may be familiar with the secret or heck even therapists themselves sometimes recommend folks having a gratitude journal, writing three things you're grateful for every day. Well, he suggested having a victory log, writing down your wins for the day and doing it at least for 90 days and seeing how you feel. And I've done it. And just counting small victories like getting up in the morning, that's a victory within itself. There's people who may listen to this today who may not be well, sadly, <laughs> around a year in the future, depending on the situation and being able to be grateful for today, heck, even being able to live throughout the whole day because tomorrow's not promised, even the rest of 
today isn't promised for a lot of people. So being alive, being able to have a roof over your head, being able to eat, being able to have friends, being able to have family, having the ability to contact family, just win after win, just those things that are actual wins because even some educators, they get a lot of personal and professional development sessions and they hear gratitude journals like, oh God, I don't feel, I'm thankful, but it's like, eh, gratitude journals, a humbug. And there's, and then when I mentioned the victory log, they're like, oh, wait, I'm a freaking winner. Like I'm actually writing down these things that I've actually won in life. And just that mental switch of really seeing it as a victory and counting your victories because when you have those small wins and you build them up that'll build up your confidence and then you'll must enough confidence to feel like you can take on the world metaphorically and it may not just be the world but it may be your world because the higher your con the bigger you can change your world indeed and changing your world involves having those small wins being active and aware of those wins and reflecting on them and seeing how you can create more wins not only for yourself but for others after a while so that's one major lesson and the other one that really sticks out to me is from one of my mentors dr ray charles i believe his episode was 221 righteous leadership where he actually talked about having mentors across the globe because he's a leadership expert. He's been around for quite a while and he, he he's a very humble man, but he has a lot of connections across the globe because the thing is a lot of his friends, when they were getting close to their fifties, they were pressing the suicide button and they didn't have any go-to people. And Dr. Ray, his doctorates is in biochemistry and risk assessment. And he realized, okay, so when it comes to this risk of going into that dark place, it's usually in the deepest, darkest depths of the night, early in the morning, sometimes two or three o'clock. So it's like, okay, hey, I can't call somebody in the U.S. They might think of the worst. But if I have somebody in China who I'm friends with, somebody overseas, calling them, seeing how they're doing so they can talk me out of that situation, like that was one major thing that he dropped on me, having a global set of mentors and friends across the globe that you can reach just about any time that can help you in your situation. And thanks to social media, it gets a bad rap. And to be honest, it, it, it makes sense why it gets a bad rap nowadays, depending on what part of social media you're in. But the good thing is you connect with people across the globe. And in situations like that, if someone's going through that, ask for help, please ask for help. <laughs> we want to hear your story today. We don't want to go to your funeral and hear good things that you can't hear. We, we want you to be here today, but get help today and just focusing on the good. So having a victory journal, counting your wins, and then making sure you build up a bunch of friendships that you can have across the globe and some mentors that you can have uh, across the globe that it, if God forbid you get into that situation, you can actually have someone to talk to. I love that. Yes. Now, I did listen to Dr. Ray Charles. I was drawn to his name because of Ray Charles. <laughs> I to that podcast. Yes, yep. and you're right. He does. He, that, that's an excellent podcast as well, guys. You, you need to listen to that one because he does talk about that international network, which is a great thing. Now, you know what? As you were speaking, I just thought about something you said earlier as well about, you know, going north. One of my friends, Marissa, I don't know where she is. She's Australian. Um, we lost contact, but bless her heart. She she is such a kind soul. But she used to always say, how are you going? How are you going? Because that's what Australians say. You said, how are you doing? How are you going? How are you going? I can't do. Well, they, they tell me I can do the accent, but I won't try. But <laughs> <laughs> she would always say that. Um and she was wonderful. She was fantastic. But she always had a smile on her face. But you're right about having that international network because of the time zone. Um, and when people are very down, very depressed, I always suggest to people, especially when they suffer from depression, to keep some type of victory journal. And so somebody said to me years ago, when they're down and depressed, making a cup of tea 
is like climbing Mount Everest. And I have never forgotten that. It's in my book. I'm I'm actually writing a book. I've got about three or four books on the go here, and I just can't seem to. Well, I, Dom, you have inspired me, I have to say, and I want all that my listeners to know, our listeners to know, I'm now inspired to at least complete a book. So I must do it, and I will do it, and that's because of Dom and what I'm taking away from you today about that. But yes, that's in my one of my books because it's such a profound statement. And so for them, a win would be just making it, getting out of bed to make a cup of tea for them. Um, and when they're de- when people are depressed, they don't like to shower. That's a, for some reason they hate water. So that is another goal, as you spoke about, small wins, small wins. But yes, wonderful stuff. Now, Dom, if you had to carve anything into stone. What would it be? Wow, if I had to carve anything into stone, what would it be? Hmm, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, let's see. If I could carve anything into stone, I guess it would have to be a giant marble statue that says you matter because like and then just put it in a place where it gets a lot of foot traffic. So that way folks can just see that sign and be like, hey, oh, you matter. Like, oh, wow. OK, I Um, all right cool i I do matter like (laughs) like even if they're really really depressed for a second because i can even remember one time i was at a library on my day off a different one and (laughs) one guy was going through a lot he he might have been homeless but he's going through a lot and funny enough a week or so before i met this guy in a conversation he was going off about some things that (laughs) <laughs> uh some borderline conspiracy theories <laughs> and also some things seems like he was uh having a rough time but a couple weeks ago before that conversation happened a speaker handed out these you matter cards and was like hey keep these in your wallet or your purse or whatever and give this out to who you think needs it and i'm like all right cool i'll just keep this in my card and then whatever happens we'll see where intuition goes and i gave it to that guy and he was like oh wow it, it just like stopped all of his conspiracy theories for a split second he's like oh wow that's freaking nice like oh thanks and then he, he smiled a little bit more after that so that would probably be what i would carve into stone a sign that says you matter and put it where a lot of foot traffic is so that way if folks aren't full zombie apocalypse mode in their phone and they see it they'll be like oh sweet thanks <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. You matter. Two words, one message, one powerful message. Two words, one really powerful message. And we've only got a couple of more questions because I know we, we, we've we now end, ending, nearing the end. But with a bird's eye view, you know, with the inquisitive wren, so we've got to look at from a bird's eye view. Is there anything that you want to do next? When you really look at your life from a bird's eye view, what's next? Yeah, what next for me? Definitely full time entrepreneurship. That's definitely going to be in the future for me because right now I'm in a place where, all right, building up enough income to where I feel comfortable and then eventually making that jump within a couple years from now because with my job itself, I've had it for or at least in the organization, I should say. I've been in there for 15, going on 16 years now. I started there when I was basically 15 and a half and was brought back when I turned 16 when I was legally allowed to work because I didn't do anything stupid during my three months of interning there. <laughs> and basically, they just I just kept up the job through the rest of high school and college, and they promoted me after getting my IT degree, and I've just been enjoying it ever since the whole self-growth and personal transformation, but full-time entrepreneurship is definitely in the cards for me in the future, being able to speak across the globe, encouraging folks and helping folks to really tap into being the best self-leader that they can be because self-leadership is really where it all begins because from the cradle to the grave, we lead ourselves the longest and eventually some folks will come along for the ride, but it really starts with you and you have to make decisions daily and managing those choices is part of self-leadership. And if you make the right choices or at least 
know how to recover from some bad choices, then <laughs> you'll be good. <laughs> That's a very good point. Okay, great. So we've got that to look forward to. With hey, I appreciate it. Hey, if folks come to me for advice, I'll be honored. Like, shoot, there's a there's a ton of people to learn from nowadays. And hey, if y'all decide to learn from me, then hey, that's freaking great. Especially you, Shaw. Looking forward to reading your first book so I can get you on the Going North podcast. Return the favor. Oh, that's I right. I would love it. I would love it. Yes. No. You've inspired me. I'm I'm definitely going to. It's been on my mind recently and lots of people have said you just need to do it so i will do i've made excuses i will do but i'm looking forward to knowing and hearing more from you so lastly we just want to put a fork in it far out random question <laughs> cue on the end Sweet. there we go i've got a few um bits here i look away i'm just it's a it literally is very random so here we go here's one What's something you what's something that you completely don't understand? <laughs> wow, something I completely don't understand. Wow. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> I'm just thinking ever since 2020, there's like, oh god, I don't even know. <laughs> I like it. it's like, where the heck do I start? Flat earthers came to my mind. <laughs> oh, okay, yes. I mean, that's a big one. I'm still debating. <laughs> Flat Earth. Okay, I'm with you on that. Yeah, one. I'm, I'm, I'm going one. with that one. If I get hate mail, sweet, that means I'm doing something right. <laughs> exactly. You're positive. <laughs> and people don't understand that the, even Einstein, I always say this talk about energy. When you give out negativity i don't care if it's behind a moniker or fake account your energy is connected to whatever you're giving out so it's going to come back you can use the fake picture fake, fake profile fake name fake everything your energy is connected to it so be aware of what you're giving out because there's a direct it's like a boomerang it's a boomerang so it goes out and it comes straight back. So for me, it would be a boomerang. I don't understand how that happens. You throw something out and it comes straight back. That's incredible. But I like it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so flat earth, I love it. Let, let's. I'm with you on that. Don't understand it. Don't understand the constant. Yeah, the whole thing. <laughs> Tom, you have been an absolute delight to speak to. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, thank you, Sha. Appreciate it today. That's right, indeed. I'm always excited to come back on your show. You're a great host. You ask great questions and you prepare efficiently. I freaking love it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes, I'd love for you to come back. So have a great day and we'll see you soon. Thanks so much for listening today. Make sure you subscribe and follow on all streaming platforms. Leave me a comment and also let me know if there's any particular topics you'd like me to discuss. See you next time.